Hello, me again. We're back. Back with the bonnet. Um, it's been a few weeks since the last video. As I said last time, not a huge amount to show. Um, lots of filling, sanding, you know, that sort of thing. Donkey work, really, and it just goes on and on and on. So I won't bore you with seeing endless videos of me putting filler in and rubbing it back. Um, but we're getting there. It's moving on. So I'll show you where we're up to. As you can see, it's starting to take shape. Now I'm gonna spend the last couple of weeks really working on this bottom section. So flattening out that underside, making the little um, front splitter. As you can see, it's acquired some damage down here. It's cracked. I tried moving it on my own. It was stood up for ages and I thought I need to get it flat again and work on the top. So I thought if I was carefully let it forward, forgetting how much resin and filler I've put into the front to the point where it's very front heavy and it's quite it is quite heavy to lift it's a two-man job to lift it and I was on my own and I thought I'll just do it and of course the whole thing fell forwards landed on the splitter there was a crunch and I thought oh for sake but it's okay a couple of cracks and it's fine um just needs a little bit of filler and a bit of tightening up this is obviously only to make a mold from right this isn't the finished article so it doesn't matter really what damage occurs to this as long as it's a nice flat surface because as I say We'll be taking a fiberglass mold of this and then the bonnet will be a fiberglass mold fiberglass out of the fiberglass mold you know what i mean so it doesn't really matter um making sure we got the bumper nice and straight that took ages whilst it was up in the air like so filled this panel with resin let gravity do the work for you right the, the resin will level itself out and that'll give you a nice flat surface in there done the same thing inside the scoop um, so we're good pretty much from the bottom up to about here. So we started doing the inside of the uh, grill edges as well, getting them smoothed out. This is pretty smooth. You can't see because it's covered in a layer of dust. That one needs doing. And obviously when it comes to doing these parts, I need to be careful that they are um, trapezoid. So if you're looking at the profile, imagine it's facing that way. The profile has to go up and down like that. It can't be square, because otherwise when we come to take this out of the mold, if it's square or it's the other way around, that ain't gonna come out. So it has to be slightly trapezoid so this comes out of here. I'm sure you know what I mean. Started that as well. Getting the top most of the way there. This is actually surprisingly smooth. That's quite a nice finish. In my infinite wisdom, using a high build poly base primer, um, which has a small amount of filler in it, that's why it's called high build primer, right? It's like a thick gray paint. You put it on, it's got a very small amount of filler in it, which goes over and fills all the little scratches for you. And when you rub it back, it's, it's flat. It's, um, it's good stuff. However, I had a brainwave which was to collect a load of the dust from when I've been sanding. I've got a bucket full of dust, which I'm trying to leave it all on the floor. It's not my workshop. So I'm collecting my dust in a little bucket and I thought, hey, why not mix the gray high bill primer with a load of filler dust, make it really thick like porridge, and then we'll spread it on. And that way it'll double, triple, quadruple the filling effect, right? It's really gonna fill up and that'll be good which worked to a certain extent. The problem was it didn't go off very well. Um, it's been about eight weeks probably since I put that on and it's only now getting to the point where I can start to sand it. It's just the most ungodly thing. I thought I was gonna have to scrape it all back off again. It just went almost like blue tack. It's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, Ugh, dust in my nose. I go home and I look like a cokehead in the evenings. And it's like blue tack. You rub a sandpaper across it and it just makes little like bits of blue tack on the bottom of your sandpaper. You can't sand it. But now it's getting to the point where we can see it's starting to go dusty when you sand it, which is exactly what you want. But like I say, it's been about eight weeks and I was pulling my hair out thinking, oh, you've good one, James. You've really uh, outdone yourself here. 
So there we go, don't ever put high bird on too thick. I think what happens is when you put it on really thick, the very topmost layer starts to go off. And what it essentially does is it seals all the um, solvent down inside. And of course the solvent needs to evaporate out in order for the paint to dry. A um, bit like if you get a tub of paint, you get a hard layer on the top, punch down through it, you've got your liquid paint in the bottom. Same thing I think happened with this. It trapped a load of solvent inside. Um, we tried heating it, we had blow torches on it, heat guns, we've got a big propane space here, the whole shebang, and it just nothing was working. And eventually we figured if we just leave it long enough it'll be alright. Um, and it gets to the point now where I can sand it. So that's nice. So as you can see what we're doing, we're just going along, pick up any imperfections, making sure all the wings are nice and smooth. Along the top panel here, cutting this all back, getting it nice, making sure the edges all feather out very nicely. Very good way of telling whether your uh, panel is flat or not is how well the edge of your filler thins or feathers. You can see right here, you can see that's feathered really nicely, it's ghosted out and that is perfectly smooth. If you close your eyes and run your finger across that, you can't feel the edge. If we come down to here, you can visually see there's a slight step in the edge of the filler, all right? Which means it's low here. So next time I do a fill, I need to fill back to here and trap that line. We're sanding here, getting the high spot. We're sanding here to a high spot, but just on the edge, it's not quite picking that line out like it is here, which means this is a little bit low. It's a ball ache doing it. I don't enjoy doing bodywork. It's a nightmare. My heart goes out to those guys who do bodywork for a living because it's bloody hard work. Um, block sanding things, it takes hours. You never get it first go. You think you've got it perfect. You paint over it. And of course, as soon as you put paint over it, it shows you where all your imperfections are and you end up going back and filling it again. And again, you swear to God, the second time you've definitely got it. And once again, there'll be other spots. And you just fill, sand, repeat. Fill, sand, repeat. And it just goes on for weeks. And it's at this point when you think, why the hell did I even bother starting it in the first place? But there we go. The end justifies the means. I thought that when I was halfway through building the car. I thought, what are you doing? How many hours are you going to spend out here in the cold, you know, welding or painting or chasing bad wiring? And then, of course, in the end, you get in your car, you drive around, you think, this is cool, I'm so glad I persevered. Rather than being one of those guys who has half-finished projects lying all over the place, you just can't bring yourself to finish. I don't want to be that guy. If I start something, I want to finish it. And I would say we're probably 90% here with this now. Whilst it doesn't look much, because obviously there's you can see filler and the old paint underneath and all the rest of it, what we are getting now is a really nice, flat, uniform surface. Um, and that's the aim. It needs to be flat, obviously, so that we can mould it. And when we get our mould out, if you don't do all this now, if you don't spend the time really going in, chasing all the low spots and trying to get it perfect, when you get your panel out of the mould at the very end and you spray your gloss on it, your gloss is going to show any imperfection in that panel and you're going to wish that you'd spent the extra time doing it and getting it right. Admittedly, you could, again, put filler on your new panel, fill all the gaps in, respray it, but what's the point in doing it twice? Why not do it once, get a good mould off that and then have it nice and flat? And if anyone else ever came along afterwards and said, hey, you know what, that's quite cool, can you make me one? I can go, yeah. And I haven't got to go, it's okay, but it's not great. Ooh, I feel a little bit guilty. At least I know it'll be straight. Hard part, of course, is getting the symmetry right. Because all this, this whole front bit, as you know, is all built of foam and fiberglass and filler. So... You know, up to here, you're good because you're working off an existing bonnet. I know this side is going to be symmetrical or largely symmetrical with that side. But when we're doing stuff down the front here, how do I know that it's the same thickness and this angle where it comes in and tapers is the same and the angle where it slopes down towards the front is right? Well, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the shape of the front grille, how it's coming out at the moment. But, you know... Still more work to do. Now, every now and again, we're going to guide coat it. So as you can see, I've just gone over it with a grey spray. Something darker than the actual paint finish. It looks a lot lighter on camera, but it is actually quite dark, just due to the uh, lens flare. And um, 
I'm sure you probably already know what guide coating is, but in case you don't. So what we're going to do is go over it with just any old rattle can. Don't have to get full coverage. We're just going to spray it and get some paint on top so that when we come over now with our sandpaper with a reasonably straight edge, we're going to use our plywood form with some 40 grit on it. As we start to sand this away, any flat areas will be sanded away evenly. If there's any low areas, then we'll see that the paint still remains. So what you'll end up with is a nice grey, light grey section where you can see the primer and the paint's been sanded off. And if you've got a little dish of the dark paint left behind, you know that area is low. Now you've got two choices there. You can either build that up or you can cut all the um, remaining surface back down to come down to that level. So it's imperative that you cut back evenly all the time, nice long strokes. And this is going to point out to you where all your low areas are, so you know where to put your filler. And then it's a case of uh, sand, sand, sand. Fill that out on John. I'm still sanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it feels like. But um, I knew that was what it was going to be, right? You know what you're getting into before you sign up, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Just got to keep going. That's all we can do. So for the time being, I've only guide coated the top layer. I want to make sure this is flat, so if I can get these areas nice and flat, I can sort of almost forget about that part, i.e. the big main part, and then focus my attention on the, um, the wings, the sides, and then down towards the back where the clips are, over the arches, etc. It's when you're doing something like this of this scale, which is, you know, pretty big. It's not like doing a regular body panel on a car. Because with a regular body panel on a car, you can only go down until you hit metal. And then you know where the panel is. So you've got something underneath all the paint and the filler that's already probably nine tenths the shape you want. With something like this, obviously I've built all the front of it myself from foam and fiberglass and filler. So... I've got no existing panel to go down to, if that makes sense. And that makes it twice as hard, but like I say, with a big project like this, um, micromanagement, I think, is the key. Don't get carried away trying to do the whole thing, which I always do, guaranteed. I'll do a little bit there, and then I'll go and do a bit over there, and then come back and do a bit there, then that'll get boring, so I'll go and do a bit over there. And you end up just chasing your tail all the time, going around doing lots of little bits, and you never feel like you're getting anything done. I worked at an office in another lifetime. And it was like that sometimes. You'd have so many things piled up on your desk and you'd end up doing a bit of all of them and at the end of the day you'd still have all the same stuff on your desk and you didn't feel like you'd done anything. You have, you've put a day's work in, but it doesn't feel like you've done anything. Whereas if you take one task and do it, see it through to completion, at least you can tick that box off and say, well, that one thing is done. Um, and I suppose this is probably a bit like that. That's what I should have done. But of course, me being me, dive in, both feet first. Start slapping foam and filler on and then see where you end up. But, um, yeah, we're getting there. So next job for me, go and get some more sandpaper. I've probably filled a bin bag full of sandpaper already, so I need to go and get some more sandpaper. Um, and then start to cut this back. See how close we are. I think we're pretty close. And then... Um, I can start to work down through the grades, get down to like the 120 and then start wet sanding with the 200, 250 until we get a nice flat shiny layer which we can then wax for our mould. But it still feels like a long way away at this moment in time. Keep going. Okay, with the guide coat on, we can start cutting it back now and looking for those dreaded low spots. Um, as you can see, I have given it a good dusting all over and I've just started rubbing down this side you can see where the paint's missing so when we get into it you can start to see all the black areas is obviously where the paint has settled in low spots and there's a few bits here or there these sort of bits I'm not too worried about because I can I will cut that that back the whole thing back evenly until I get all of those gone what we're looking for is any um, nasty ones as we come up here, we can see we've got a bit of an area around here. This whole sort of area here, we could do with a quick skim. Up here, we've got this piece of filler in here. We can see the edges of it, especially here at the top. 
still have that black paint. I know there's a bit of work still to do here. So I can see that this whole piece in here is low. So that is also going to need filling back out again. And again, a little bit up here. But if I feel that on my finger, I can't actually feel that at all. But the paint doesn't lie. If it's black, then obviously I haven't sanded it, therefore it's low. So I expect what we can do in here now is get in here with a DA and start to cut this back nice and evenly with the DA and start to flat this back uniformly. There's a lot of high build on here. There's probably two mil of high build on here. So I've got plenty to cut back into. But obviously areas up here like this, this is going to need a quick, quick skimmer filler. But on the whole, that side is surprisingly flat. I say surprisingly, I've been working like a, uh, you know what, at it. So unsurprisingly. And then we just need to do the same thing. Come back here, cut all this back, go up the other side, go in around the scoop. And um, like I say, once we're happy with that, we can then come down and start to work on the edges of the wings and back down around the existing. This shouldn't be too bad because again, as you can see by the original paint, this is the existing fiberglass um, bonnet under here. So this should be reasonably flat underneath, assuming of course that it was um, flat when it came out of the mold factory, whoever made it, whenever it was made, probably back in the late 60s, early 70s would be my guess. So I don't know how flat it is until I start cutting it. Oh, it looks pretty good. So as I said before, keep on sanding. Right. It's that day, Dirt tag. Guide coat's gone. I guess. Himself. Guy coat's gone, so rub that all back. That should be flat, and I have just panel wiped it, so I probably should stop touching it. That's the done thing, isn't it? And it's about as flat as I can bother to get it for the moment. So next job, let's spray it, all right? Get it all in one color, and then we can see what's what. If I had a shirt from here, then we're golden. No, it's all right. It's a high build paint, so you can probably, well, you can see the texture in it. Looks like a giant grapefruit. Well, that's fine. It's all going to get sanded. That's what this coat is for. This isn't the final coat. It's not even the final product. This is just for our mold. And I can already see where all the little imperfections are, all the little bits I've missed. See that one? Yeah. Loads of little grooves and holes in it, but that's fine. That is the whole point to putting this coat on. So leave that one to go for a bit, and then we'll get the second coat on. And there she is painted. It's pretty much touch dry, but obviously we're going to leave it alone for a while. There's a few areas we can see, as I've already said, there's a couple bits here, which you're going over, but that's fine. That was the whole point, like I say, to doing this. Makes it much easier to see. Once it's in one color, you can actually see what you're doing. As soon as it's in multiple colors, it's really hard to tell what's going on. But it's probably like 98% there. I'll tell you 98%. I think that'll do us.